Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. And I hope you guys are all doing well this evening, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you're at in this moment. I wanted to talk some more about the case of the four students in Moscow, Idaho. Last week, some of the information that was reported turned out to be bogus. So in an attempt to make sure that everything is accurate and up to date, I thought I would kind of go through the day of Saturday, November 12th, 2022, and Sunday, November 13th, 2022. On Saturday, November 12th, 2022, there's a University of Idaho football game. After the game, many of the students go out to socialize. 20-year-old Ethan Chapin and his girlfriend of the past eight to nine months, Zana Kernodal, attend a party at the Sigma Chi frat house from 8 to 9 p.m., That house is on the University of Idaho campus at 735 Nez Perce Drive. They return to Zana's sprawling off-campus rental house, which is located at 1122 East King Road by 1.45 a.m. Note that this house has three floors, six bedrooms, and three bathrooms. Each floor contains two bedrooms. It also has multiple points of entry, a front door with a security code, a sliding glass door into the kitchen, and a patio off the top level of the home. All of those offer possible entry by a perpetrator of this crime. Best friends from childhood Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan head over to the Connor Club Bar at 11 p.m. The bar is located at 202 North Main Street. Gonsalves and Mogan remain there until 1.30 a.m. By 1.40 a.m., Maddie and Kaylee are ordering carbonara pasta from the Grub Truck, which is parked at 318 South Main Street. They are captured on the Grub Truck's Twitch live stream, and they stand there for about 10 minutes waiting for the food. Madison appears a tad tipsy, and they use a private party car for a ride home. They arrive at 1122 East King Road at approximately 1.45 a.m. That is said to be the same time that Zana Kernodal and her boyfriend Ethan Chapin arrive at the home as well. Now, the young man in the white hoodie seen in the grub truck video, he apparently has been cleared by the authorities, as has the driver of that private car. Two additional roommates who reside at 1122 King Road were said to be out of town earlier Saturday night. They return home around 1 a.m. These two roommates inhabit the bedrooms on the lowest level of the multi-floor home. Both of the two roommates have spoken to the authorities and are cooperating, and law enforcement does not believe they're involved In the crime, Kaylee Gonsalves shares a dog with her ex-boyfriend, Jack Ducour. The dog was at Kaylee's rental home on Saturday night and into Sunday morning. At some point, Zana and Ethan head to Zana's bedroom, which is on one of the upper levels of the three-level house. Kaylee and Madison head to their rooms as well on an upper level of the three-floor home. Between 2.26 a.m. and 2.52 a.m., seven calls are made from Kaylee's cell phone to her ex-boyfriend, Jack Ducur. Madison Mogan 
also made three calls to Jack's phone number before 3 a.m. It is believed that at some point between 3 a.m. and 4 a.m., a Blitzkrieg-style attack began at the home. The perpetrator used a K-bar, sharp-edged object and focused on the upper torso and chest. Each one of the students had multiple wounds. Zana Kurnado fights back, sustaining injuries to her hands in the process, bruising on her body attest to the struggle. It is believed that at least one other student also fought back. The next morning, Sunday, November 13th, at 11.58 a.m., police officers responded to the off-campus house at 1122 East King Road after a 911 call reported an unconscious person inside the house. That 911 call originated from inside the home and was from one of the unharmed roommate's phones. The two Unharmed roommates, you may recall, were living on the ground floor or basement floor. It's the lowest level in the home. The authorities are not saying who exactly made the 911 call. Chief Fry of the Moscow Police Department said that there were other friends that had arrived at the location when the police arrived at the home on Sunday morning. They arrive at 11.58 a.m. They find the front door wide open. Upon a closer inspection inside, they discover Kaylee, Madison, Ethan, and Zana deceased. The coroner will later say that she believes all four students were asleep in the beds when they were attacked. Autopsies are performed on Thursday, November 17th. The Lata County Coroner confirms the identities of all four students and determines that each one died as a result of foul play. The perpetrator used a sharp-edged object and again concentrated the injuries on the chest and upper torso. Each student had multiple wounds. There was no sign of S.A. The coroner stated that the four students were likely asleep when attacked. There was no sign of forced entry to the home. The front door had a security code. Apparently, it was widely known among the roommate's friends, and this house was also said to be a party house. The two unharmed roommates said, apparently... I don't know if this is verified, that they locked their bedroom doors when they went to sleep, probably because it was a party house and people were known to come and go. And since they were on the ground level, perhaps they felt it was even more important to make sure that their bedroom doors were locked. The coroner described the crime scene as having a lot of the red stuff that runs through all our veins on the walls. And again, note that at this point in the investigation, detectives do not believe that the two surviving roommates, the guy in the white hoodie in the grub truck video, and the driver of that private party car who drove Kaylee and Madison home from the grub truck location, are involved in the crime. Note that the students were not bound nor were they gagged. That information was incorrect when it was shared earlier last week. Detectives have seized the contents of three dumpsters along King Road. They have also contacted local businesses to see if anyone recently purchased a sharp-edged object. Investigators are also asking for residents and businesses near both the home and within the area where all four students spent time on Saturday night into early Sunday morning 
to check their security camera footage to see if they caught anything on it. Note that Kaylee Gonsalves had recently broken up with her longtime boyfriend, Jack Ducur. However, Kaylee's parents have said they 100% do not believe that Jack is involved. Note that the police have not located the object that was used to commit the crime, nor have they named any persons of interest or suspects at this time. Kaylee Gonsalves' sister, Olivia, told the New York Times there were seven unanswered calls made from her sister's phone to her former boyfriend, Jack, between 2.26 a.m. and 2.52 a.m. Based on information from phone logs, Olivia was able to download from her sister's phone provider. Olivia said it was not unusual for her sister Kaylee to call people repeatedly until they answered the phone. And Kaylee's best friend, Madison Mogan, also called Jack three times before 3 a.m. As of tonight, Sunday, November 20th, 2022, the police have fielded 646 tips and have conducted more than 90 interviews. Note that the owner of the rental home has a 40-year-old son who is still shown to have his address listed as that home, and there is a sixth bedroom. According to Chris McDonough of the interview room, who is a retired detective, whoever committed this crime is likely, one, below average intelligence, two, socially inadequate, three, nocturnal, four, someone who does unskilled work, five, someone who was able to demonstrate focused control during this venting of his rage. Six, committed the crime in a blitz-style attack. Seven, was likely subjected to harsh discipline as a child. Eight, was in an anxious mood during the attack. Nine, only uses alcohol minimally. 10. Possibly lives alone. 11. Lives and works near the crime scene. 12. Demonstrated significant behavioral changes after committing the crime. 13. Is likely male. 14. Is seen by many as weird and controlling. And note that there are 58 RSOs living near the residence at 1122 East King Road. Now, the authorities have said that there is no evidence that any SA took place during this crime, so those RSOs, who most of them seem to have issues with children, probably do not fit the MO of this crime's perpetrator. And again, the authorities have described crime as being personal and targeted. And whoever did this was venting an incredible amount of rage and anger. I hope that this video clears up some of the inaccuracies that were put out earlier in the week. That's all for now. I will be keeping you guys up to date on all the happenings in this case. Let's pray that whoever committed this horrific crime is caught and is caught soon. And let's also send some prayers and positive vibes to the families, to all of the students' friends, to anyone who goes to that university, and anyone who lives in Moscow, Idaho. Until the next time, on bed crime stories. Hey, do me a favor, please hit that like button, subscribe if you're not yet subscribed, leave me a comment, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. You don't, you're not a big drinker?
Do you think anyone would drink wine? I would, I'll have some wine. I didn't even think of it, really, because, you know, I'm not a big drinker, yeah, but maybe I should have something. You don't, you're not a big drinker? Do you think anyone would drink wine? I would, I'll have some wine. I didn't even think of it, really, because, you know, I'm not a big drinker, yeah, but maybe I should have something. You don't. Oh my God, it's 9, 10. Guys, can anybody drop me to class? I'm fucking late for my meeting. I'm supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. Did anybody do their chores today? Fuck, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> You guys, it's eight. Gotta go. Jake's calling. Oh, Jake's calling. Oh my god, I look horrid. <laughs> oh, Murphy, you look so cute. Get, get out of here. You seriously gotta get out of here. You're fucking stupid as shit. Hey guys, I know I talk about myself a lot, but like, what would you guys do in my situation? <laughs> Dana, where are you going? Yeah, I gotta go pull you. I failed to him already. Dana, do like a wine night? Like, let's just do a wine night. <laughs> Yo, is it okay if I have a party? Like, just three or four people, at most. Guys, it smells like dirty dick in here. Murphy, you've been a bad boy. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, it's 9-10. Guys, can anybody drop me to class? I'm fucking late for my meeting. I'm supposed to be there 10 minutes ago. Did anybody do their chores today? Fuck, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> You guys, it's eight. Gotta go. Jake's calling. Oh, Jake's calling. Oh my god, I look horrid. <laughs> oh, Murphy, you look so cute. Get, get out of here. You seriously gotta get out of here. You're fucking stinking this shit out. <laughs> hey guys, I know I talk about myself a lot, but like, what would you guys do in my situation? <laughs> Dana, where are you going? Yeah, I gotta go pull you. I failed to him already. <laughs> Dana, do like a wine night? Like, let's just do a wine night. Yo, is it okay if I have a party? Like, just three or four people, at most.